and welcome to our virtual annual discipline meeting for the 2023-2024 year. For those who may not know me, I'm Dane Lamont, the School Partnership Specialist for Penn Highlands Dual Enrollment Program. During our fall 2023 semester, we resumed our in-person ACE Discipline meetings at the Penn Highlands Richland campus. There, our college liaisons were able to hold live sessions with our ACE instructors to discuss specific topics related to the disciplines that you teach. While we understand that it is not always possible for teachers to attend the live meetings, these discussions were recorded so those absent can gain the benefit of the event. Please enjoy the recording of your annual discipline specific activity. And we look forward to working with you in the fall and hope you can join us in the next ACE Discipline meeting. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to get into professor mode. I am recording for the benefit. No, that's okay. No, no, you're fine. I'm recording. I'm sure I am. Oh, <laughs> for the benefit of four of the instructors that I've been tasked with evaluating who couldn't make it tonight. So okay. there's four in the, the humanities department. Um, several of them are music teachers, and one music teacher is also teaching uh, an art class as well. And I'm okay. going to be meeting with her via Zoom tomorrow. So Who is that if I may ask? Um, I have Olivia. Uh, Olivia Gennaro tomorrow um, in the morning. She is a oh, school district. Um, without my paper in front of me. That's uh, very impressive for her to be able to do music. Yes. Art. Yeah. So she. So I have two Zoom presentations with her tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, and and I'm looking forward to that. I was just I was telling Dane, who was in here just a few minutes ago, that I had the pleasure of being on site in Berlin, and a little shout out to to Katie that I got to see down there. Katie was really impressive in that she was using boom whackers, and her students were actually playing excerpts from Handel's Messiah. You know, so she had the the, the musical notes coming down on the screen, and these kids were hammering out the Hallelujah chorus with boom whackers. Now, uh, of course. There's a learning curve. I mean, I couldn't do offhand what those students were doing with those boom whackers, but wouldn't you sit up and take notice if, if your teacher brought out the boom whackers and yeah. said, we're gonna play Handel's Messiah. I mean, <laughs> fantastic stuff. So the name um, boom whacker. The, the name the boom whacker. I, mean, I just think it's like, it's aboriginal, isn't it? It's like a yeah. didgeridoo, you know, it's a yeah. boom whacker. Um, <laughs> So, you know, here's the thing. I'm Elijah. Uh, we have uh, Eric, or yeah, Eric, Eric yeah. with us, Martha with us, right? Yes. In class today, in class. Um, I have not done this before in this department. So I have not acted as a liaison for uh, the ACE program before this. And I kind of got thrown into it a little bit late in the semester. It was like mid-October before I knew I was going to be doing any of this. Mm -hmm. And um, so I need you. As much as you're here to, to hear me, I need to hear you because you guys have done this before. And my big goals, as I was telling Dane, were what's working? I want to find that out from you. Um, obviously, everyone that I'm speaking to virtually or here in the room, you know where your syllabus is. You know what you're expected to do. You have your textbook. Uh, you have the materials that the college provides, or at least you have access to them. So after that, it's all about how you interpret it. Mm -hmm. And so what's working? What's not working? What do you want to see from the college? What can you suggest? What are you doing that makes this unique but still fulfills the requirements of the uh, of the course? I mean, this is like having an AP course on uh, on a little bit higher of a level even than the AP course just to meet the college requirements for this degree program. Mm -hmm. And that was a question that Martha was asking about, can we run an AP course concurrently? with this material. And I said, I, that is definitely an administrative question, but I think as long as all of the boxes are checked off, mm -hmm. right, sure. then there's no reason why you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that's my opinion. Yeah. I don't I don't make that decision, but I mean, that's my opinion. I wouldn't see why we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So let me shut up. Why don't you guys talk to me and tell me what's your previous experience of these evening meetings and, and how's this usually gone for you guys? This is my first. This is your first. Okay. Yes. Well, you're no help. <laughs> I am not going to be any help. Get out of here. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> no, okay. no, you're fine. I've been here several times. Okay. Yes, and... I've been here several times. Typically, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to have Eric here because, and, and visual arts as well, you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually, I'm here by myself. 
And that's um, no fun. Um, no, but the, but Jamie uh, Heidegg, who was was our um, coordinator in the past, um, she's a visual arts person as sure. well. So we would talk about what I do in class. We would talk about her coming over to do her observations. Sure. Um, and you know, just to make sure again, all those boxes are checked, yeah. and make sure that you're you're following the alignment of what is expected of you here at Penn Highlands. And then she would also come back then and try to get scheduled, you know, mm -hmm. an in-house observation. So. Right. Uh, Ro uh, Roaring Spring. That's Olivia is at Roaring Spring. Mm -hmm. I see. Sadly, I have four instructors that I'm evaluating this semester, only one of which I was able to arrange a face to face meeting. And that's just because of scheduling. The mm -hmm. classes that I teach here are conflicting with the days and the times that this class is offered oh. in the high school level. So I can't physically be there mm -hmm. and then make it to my class right. in order to teach my class. So I'm doing some of those by Zoom. Olivia's in Roaring Spring. I'm looking forward to seeing her tomorrow. Um, uh, Katie was down in uh, Berlin. Janelle was down in um, uh, Spring Cove. And so I saw Janelle via Zoom. Uh, there were technical issues, which prevented me from being able to speak to her. I mean, I was speaking, she couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. And so there was something going on. I, I'm thinking it was probably the computer system up in Evansburg on my end that was preventing the microphone from working properly. Mm -hmm. So some of the concerns that I have are that with me being thrown into it mid-semester, I didn't have time to plan, mm -hmm. to make an arrangement to get there, because I would really much prefer doing this in person and, and being there. I mean, yeah. what a difference it made with being able to speak to, to Katie in Berlin and to be in her room and to sit there and to even talk to the, some of the students as they were coming and going. Um, so that's there's, there's my observation of how things are going so far this semester. For me in this role, um, would rather have had a little bit more time and more opportunity to be there face to face. Um, you would probably rather have people in this room when you're here for these nights. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah bounce, I'll come back. Bounce, like, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bounce like he is off and just know that you're not alone. You know, because I'm assuming you're the only art teacher at your at your high school. Right? No, actually, well, we have a middle school art teacher, but she's also now taking on a couple of. Uh, the high school courses. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm it. And so I, we we did have a department of two, and then yeah. he retired, and then it and came all to me. And they didn't hire, so correct. And it yeah. all fell down to to one person. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that modified my whole curriculum because mm -hmm. we were we were oh. year long electives with sure. the two of us being there, and then sure. just a semester. Okay. So a semester long classes. Okay. So what what is working with all of this? Do you have the resources that you need oh. in order to be able to do this? I think everything's very clear in here and uh, the examples that were given. The only thing that I would say is I think that the uh, previous example, um, I would like a better or more examples of the writing, you know, essay format answers that the kids want or need to have. Sure. Okay. Um, because the example, there was one example uh, that was given to me years ago when I first started the, the course. And uh, on the Venus of Willendorf, I, and it was, it seemed pretty spare. I, it, you know, so mm -hmm. vague, I don't know, it's kind of vague uh, on exactly how much is expected in the writing portion right. whenever they describe the outputs. I mean, I've but, uh, I've taught the art component, uh -huh. the art history class, the introduction to art history, right? Art through the ages. That right. was the textbook, of course, mm -hmm. and um, you know, your standard go-to mm -hmm. textbook sure. in its umpteenth edition, yeah, right. whatever it yeah. is now. Um, I know that when I had my students do uh, evaluations of works mm -hmm. of art, we would use a T-chart format. Okay. And they would put uh, the, the piece of art in the left-hand column. They would reserve the right-hand column for their commentary. Mm -hmm. uh, they would title and, and everything in, uh, at the top. And then I would require of them MLA formatting. Okay. You know, so if there were any citations to be made, they were in-text citations. And then if... Uh, if they needed to put the work cited page, then you follow the MLA format. So at your level, how much do students really know about MLA format? Right. Right. So it's really up to the instructor right. about how you're going to choose to enforce that writing component. Mm -hmm. I mean, like up here in the humanities department, I don't get bent out of shape when I have a student who has to take a required course, philosophy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They have to take an elective, so they take philosophy, and they're a science student, mm -hmm. and they'll say to me, "I only know APA." Fine, then use APA. Yeah, I don't care. But 
most of my other students in the humanities field use MLA, right? So if you know MLA, you can give them a, a one day overview of, right. of MLA formatting, at least that they have the basics. Mm -hmm. That goes a long way. Right? That goes a long way. I, th I think we're presupposing that they have those pieces of knowledge and they, they mm -hmm. might not. Mm -hmm. um, or even if we could organize a tutorial mm -hmm. that we could uh, do as a, a PowerPoint presentation or do as a recorded short lecture with PowerPoint slides mm -hmm. to show this is this is college writing. This is mm -hmm. the basics that you need in order to get through this course. That being said, how much writing are they doing? Uh, not much. I mean, really, what I do is I go over the uh, identification and then I... When I'm talking, well, I, first I do an overview of the entire chapter. Mm -hmm. I just kind of get No, no, of course. You know? yeah. And then I go back through and I give them maybe six to seven artworks and tell them, look, you know, four of these are going to be on the test. Or three of them are going to be in the quiz for identification. Um, and then I will go down and give them bulleted points, mm -hmm. typically five bulleted points that are key things that they need to hone in on for the uh, importance of that piece. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, if and you, then I'd say up to them to, you know, put it into a cohesive, you know, essay sort of format or, or answer. So I used to alternate with my students between from week to week. One week they would be required to do a critique mm -hmm. of a piece. The next week they would do a, a free writing based on a prompt. Mm -hmm. And so I would alternate back and forth between a critique kind of free writing assignment. Now that was in addition to their other assignments. Right. So we had other, we had classroom things going on. We had other assignments that they'd be responsible for, more academic in nature. Mm -hmm. um, but really, honestly, I mean, th the thing is, is that if you're comfortably meeting your requirements, that's up to you. Right. You okay. want to you want to come up with your own critique format? Come up with your own critique yeah. format. I'm, I'm mine, right. I just use the T-chart. You know, yeah. then put, put your image over here, put your text over here mm -hmm. in your text, follow all the rules that we would expect in APA format right. has to be two pages or it has to be one and a half, whatever it is. Boom. That's it. That's my requirement. Well, that's my main thing. I mean, the rest of the class to me is just putting the information in their heads sure. and keeping it in there. Sure. And, you know, so we do, I mean, I, I create practice quizzes just for them to nail the title and the dates because that's important. That mm -hmm. Memorization. Um, and we do like Quizlets, you know, yeah. sure game type of things to memorize. Sure. Playing a game. Yep. But uh, I had a um, I had a, a pointillist activity planned, and I got I I got taken out last semester. I was sick. I got taken down with pneumonia, and um, it ended. It culminated in heart surgery. Let's just oh. put it that way over the summer, but I had spent the last three weeks of the course teaching asynchronously. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it was from a hospital bed. Wow. You know, I was, I was, you know, tuning in from the hospital doing the, the asynchronous stuff, but I had fully planned to do lilac paintings mm -hmm. with Q-tips, mm -hmm. you know, something that your kindergartner might come home with. Right. Sure. <laughs> but something that works when you're talking about George Seurat. Sure. Absolutely. And the kid, I mean, a lot of the kids have never taken art, you know, and, and so I, mean, I always love a practical dimension. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, I was done. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I was done before yeah, I, I started. Can, I I'm sorry. And, 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 <laughs> Martha, go ahead and talk to me. What do you think? What's what's in your head? Well, honestly, I I wouldn't. I, I think I have everything in here that really I need. Um, mm -hmm. Like I told you at dinner earlier, mm -hmm. um, they have to take Fine Art 1 before they take Fine Art 2. Fine Art 2, of course, is my my ace credit. Yeah. Um, they're learning all the basics of drawing. We start out you know, basic 1.2 point, point, we get into shading geometric forms, and then we go into shading organic forms, and then they do culminating activity at the end of fine one into still life. Um, again, it, it, it covers up like everything that's in here. Then we go into um, figure sculpt, figurative sculpture. Mm -hmm. Um, that's second semester. We also do painting second semester. So we're introducing color, we're doing color theory. Sure, sure. Um, and then they get into the three, three dimensions. So, you know, and and of course, obviously, on your own here, it's you know, display mark. It's always up. It's always there. So whenever Jamie came in, um, you know, she'd give me a couple pointers here and there. Like she'd say, "Well, do you maybe want to try this, or maybe want to try that." That's just you know, everybody wants to hear that. Good, I I don't know about spirit. you, Eric, but I I'm always about yeah, good trying. Spirit. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. just trying new things. Just just you know, um, um, I was I was everything's impressed. in here. 
Yeah, I mean, I was impressed. Uh, Janelle from um, uh, Spring Cove, um, she had her students very actively reading excerpts from their textbook, which, you know, on my level, I have been out of the high school since 2004. So I haven't taught in a high school since 2000. I've been at Penn Highlands for over 12 years. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've been in other educational pursuits for the rest of that time as well. I haven't seen students read from textbooks coherently mm -hmm. since 2004. Yeah. <laughs> and to see that we still have professionals that were engaging them by making them dialogue with the book was, was really refreshing. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, that, that, that that has been done. You know that she's doing that. So mm -hmm. I'm impressed by seeing just these little things. And they're small groups. I think that class had about four students in it that day. I think the class in Berlin had about five. Um, what, are, what, what do you guys have in yours? Uh, let me see. So this, yeah, I have six okay. in this class. I'm looking, this is going to be next semester for me, sure, but I'm looking sure. at about four or five that I'll have enrolled in ACE. The, right. the class itself is probably going to end up with about 20. And we've kind of consistently seen an enrollment of about four to, to seven students, you know, in, in the ACE uh, component here. Mm -hmm. So there, there are like maybe four to seven students who are dual enrolled. Mm -hmm. They're getting our college credits. So what can we do to encourage more participation? I think that's the question. And that might be an administrative question. It's the cost of the program for some school districts. Mm -hmm. You know, some students don't have access to the funds in order to, to pay for the credits. You were talking about a grant. Yes. And I can look into it, what it was, which grant they sure. uh, just got, but we just found out at the right the beginning of the year. Sure. When, does grant, when, when does the grant run out, though? I don't know if it's just for the year. Just for the year. It has to be renewed it's, or get the reset. But even so, that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah, we had a, I don't know the state of it now. I'm not always here at the main campus, but I spend a lot of time at the branch campuses. Mm -hmm. But we used to have a very, very good grant writing staff here. here. You know, and that's something that, that I know Johnstown School District covers the cost for their students yeah. to, to come here. The students who want to be enrolled, they're top tier students. Um, well, I wonder if it's Johnstown, meaning like greater Johnstown or school district. Like the, I, I, I was, I no. don't, don't quote me. I'm not sure if it was the school district or if they were doing some sort of community fund okay. kind of grant to. I'm wondering if it's not, I mean, Tyrone is considered like below or, or not poverty level, but I mean, there's a lot of low oh, income. Yeah. Well, and Johnstown and, would fall into that category. Too. Yeah, and I'm thinking it's probably that somehow they were able to get a grant because of yes. I would, I would still so many kids that fall under that. Those are some of the questions that now you're getting above my pay grade. I mean, yeah. that's <laughs> yeah, I, I can't answer that portion of it. But um, what I'm always interested. What can we do? to make these programs more attractive to the students so that they voluntarily want to take them so that they're working actively toward their associate's degree. Maybe by the time they where, where can they access or see which, is there a list of specific schools that will accept the credit? Mm -hmm. Sure. So that's probably a, a, you know, one very important thing. They oh, want to see, because I've heard that before. I've heard, well, I, you know, is this for sure going you know, to transfer, going to transfer so to Penn State or we, something like that? We had, and I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm speaking from previous experience, but we had articulation agreements with, uh, with many, many, many institutions and there were some things that were called GAP programs, guaranteed acceptance programs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. these would, it was undeniable that Penn Highlands uh, associate's degree would transfer right in to these programs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, now this was back in the day. I mean, I'm talking 2010, 2011, 2012, um, students would come in and then they would wind up in a program at Mount Aloysius or they would mount, wind up in a program at St. Francis. Mm -hmm. Those were our two biggies back then, um, more so the Mount than St. Francis. I'm assuming that those articulation agreements are still going to be in place. Um, and even, and then even so, this certificate program, this, this uh, associate's degree stands on its own as well mm -hmm. for students who want to go directly into the workforce. Right. And think about how refreshing that is. You graduate as a senior from high school and you already have an associate's degree. Yeah. You can go right into... They're, all, they're already graduating from here before they graduate from high school. Well, and that's it. You, you know, can, that's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The world has been turned years. 
upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, post COVID observations, anything about how things are you've been doing this for a few years. Yes. So post COVID changes, observations, things we should know, things in general, in my in school in general, this is the first year for me. I'm gonna speak for me. Um that things are back to normal. Like yeah, we I don't agree. have the excuses. We don't have the, you know, we're like, I think the rigor overall, I, I feel is. Back. I think it's coming back. I mean, yeah. I, this is the first, I would say for me, it's the first normal ish, you know, or normal esque. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, as far as the schedule and yeah, there is this vibe that things are getting better. I think Honest, and this is going to sound so cynical, but I just feel like there's that generation of kids that just you know got the shaft. They and they, did. And, 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 you know, and it's, it's almost like uh, they need to get through the system. There's like still, you know, a few, it, a couple of years left that just the attitude had had been majorly, majorly. But, but not permanently changed, but changed so much that. That so many of those. You have to remember kids. the kids that we have right now in the upper levels in high school. They were middle schoolers when all right. this went down. Right. So that's a very formidable time of their life. And yeah. I don't know if it's just this year, but I do notice with the younger kids, and even I'm including like my ninth grade kids, mm -hmm. uh, and even below because I teach an eighth grade class too, that they seem a little bit more on the ball, mm -hmm. you know. And so I'm thinking that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think it, it it's finally kind of coming back to the to the fact that, like, I have expectations in my classroom that I'm not going to be like sugarcoating yeah, it. Yeah, you're not going to water it down. Correct. And, and, and you and can't in this in no. this scenario. Well, yeah. can't. We we need this to be. Right. You know, this is the format yeah. right here. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think kids are. I think kids are more. I think they're they're now talking more about saving money because because they are seeing yeah. they are seeing it now i can't just like it's above your pay grade for some of these <laughs> things above my pay grade to even discuss it but i i feel like the guidance offices and and so yeah, on there's a disconnect um, there I, I think that there could be maybe a, a better way to approach the kids mm -hmm. and, and let them know and understand or even have the parents in or, right. or get that information out to the parents maybe yes. i don't know but see i don't even know what goes on there so i'm not even going to even approach it because it is above sure. my pay grade sure, sure, you know sure. um but i know i push it in my class like i'm always like you hey guys you know this is a really good savings oh yeah and oh yeah you can that's you can't beat it no matter I got, like guys no matter no matter if you're going into a rocket science program you're still going to be required to take a humanities class you're going to have to get, get it out of the way. Yeah, you're going to have with to get me. Gen Ed yeah. out of the way. Yeah. Get him out of the way. Get half that degree. I don't Absolutely. know. Do you know, does Penn Highlands visit certain schools and they do. give like an assembly? Um, I mean, I've not seen that at like Tyrone, but so we do collect the kids and, and have well, you know, a representative. We do have, uh, actually, Kaylee's office should be able to arrange that. Yeah. We do have instant decision days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, we have representatives, field representatives that go to the local high schools mm -hmm. and those kids can come down, meet with you, talk with you as a representative of Penn Highlands and well, with, with us as representatives of Penn Highlands. And they can find out on the spot if we pull their transcripts and we get the we get the recommendation of the guidance counselor. We talk to the students a little bit. They can find out on the spot by the end of the day if they're accepted or not. Mm -hmm. And of course, Penn Highlands is, is in a different category than St. Francis or Seton Hill or, or uh, UPJ. Um, you know, we we will accept you. I mean, we will ex we will work with you. We will accept you. So there should be someone coming to your right. school. There should be an instant decision well, that features Penn I'm, I'm thinking specifically, though, for the DE courses, oh, you know, just yeah. to market those. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, that's, it's, that's or you Penn. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm just thinking to get more interest in those and to get more enrollment, um, you know, so that it would come and specifically address a lot of the questions the kids yeah. have, such as, you know, which was the cafeteria. Yeah. What's the, those the important What's the what's the babe, what's the babe situation? Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> there's my I'm showing my age, right? Um, you know, the, you know those kind of things. So a list of institutions to which our credits are guaranteed to transfer. Yeah. Um, uh, should we call it an, an intro sales pitch day? Yeah, I think so mm -hmm. for sure. 
okay, to talk about the programs and, and about uh, what's available to the students, what it costs, the benefits of, of doing this at, at this uh, time in your educational career. Mm -hmm. um, well, other things that we came up with that you wanted to see. What was the other, anything else? Those were the two biggies right there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah those are two biggies. I mean, I know one of my frustrations is that we can do this two ways. You guys are on the front line. You have these kids. You're with them. You, you, you know them. You build up a rapport with them. I've got an online philosophy course now, which features students from multiple school districts. And it's, be, it's becoming accustomed to the operating system at Penn Highlands. Mm -hmm. So the, the bright space system, uh, the, the contact and communication methods, and then it's becoming accustomed to the professor's standards. Sure. And so you know high school students. Mm -hmm. They will try to get whatever they can past you. Yeah, absolutely. And they will use every excuse in the book. Oh, mm -hmm. it didn't let me submit. Right. right. It's because you tried to submit five minutes after right. the due yeah. date. Exactly. You know, or the, due, or the deadline. So no, it's not going to let you submit. And I think the other thing, it, when we do it that way, the way that I'm doing it right now, um, certainly harder for us as instructors mm -hmm. because yeah. there's still... You have to remember, they're still in high school mentality. Yeah, but they're taking a higher level course, sure. and so there, there, there's, there is a little bit of flexibility with them. But I, I I'm not a firm proponent in hand holding. Right. 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 If you're going to take a college course, then you're going to be held to college standards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so you know, I, I think you guys have a benefit that we don't have. You're, you're working with them one on one, and it eliminates. Mm -hmm. some of this middleman confusion where they're thrown into the college system mm -hmm. with no previous training. So that that's kind of another thing that I would suggest um, specific training mm -hmm. on the bright space on Penn mm -hmm. Island's operating systems. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And uh, maybe a, maybe a brief intro to, to writing <laughs> yeah. and MLA format, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think they used to do that whenever you actually enrolled in college. Like, um, yeah, they you did. Had, well, your first English class, I think. Right, that. And, but you came, oh, right. you came in. Was that, wasn't there a day that whenever you, um, again, this is umpteen years ago, but yeah. you came in and you had, you had to take like placement tests and placement yes. exams. And then you would get used to, like, you were using Canvas at your school. We don't use Canvas. We use Google right. Classroom. Right, right. And then there's other people that use Blackboard. Mm -hmm. um, we use a program called Brightspace. And okay. then uh, Mount Aloysius uses Canvas. So it's going to depend on the institution itself. Right. Yeah. right. And But you're, you're absolutely correct. Just trying to get you know, over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. understand and know how to submit there should be maybe a, like a basic maybe a basic course that you would have to take like i don't well, know like an online visual course that that you go through so many steps and it says that you completed it before or you know for school districts i don't know do you have activity periods someone can come in during an activity yeah. period and actually do a one-on-one -on -one. Um, we, yeah we have uh, that kind of thing um, advisory Mm -hmm. you know right away in the morning yeah okay oh yeah right. i think that there's First time i think that there's time in our yeah. in all of our and schedules to be able to do something like that and i'm even saying like your students that are that you have that you are remote the remote learners mm -hmm. that there would be across the board anybody signed up for a class say at penn highlands or a class with ace you have to that complete you this module that, mm -hmm. yes, yes correct right to know how to navigate it would take right. you through different tasks to be able to navigate right. how to submit an assignment how to post an assignment or post questions how to contact your your professor yes. their right. instructor and whoever you guys, uh, we're all in the same boat i've been doing this for over 20 years i know when you haven't read the material Absolutely. When you write your assignment and you turn it in, I know when you have not the slightest clue of what you're talking about. Sure. And, and it is evident. Yes. And if that happens even after I have provided <laughs> all of the resources, including a video and a, maybe a presentation, a slideshow, whatever else you need, in conjunction with the work that you're assigned from your textbook, now you're big boys and girls because this is asynchronous learning. So you should be able to do this on your, that's why you're in this program. Mm -hmm. You should be able to do this on your own. So you need to be graded mm -hmm. according to what you turned in. Right. You know, and that, that's, I mean, I, I, I definitely am an advocate for that. So coming back around to saying about how, uh, why students would take or not take an ACE credit. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, I do find out that a lot of them, uh, 
let's just say lazy. Um, you had mentioned it earlier. Um, they don't want to do that kind of work right now. They think I'm going to put it off. Um, I will wait in, until I'm out and, and I will be in college for real. Mm -hmm. right. And they're not looking, they're not looking at the financial benefits yeah. of yeah. what this program offers. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of it boils down to the fact they just don't want to do extra work. Yeah. Yeah. And we find that too. We offer um, these AP courses. It doesn't mean that you have to take the AP exam. No, no. And no. we we help pay for the AP exam because we want to encourage more so kids you to take it. The, yeah, yes. the fee. So, um, but there's still kids that just, and I'm like, why wouldn't you take it? Mm -hmm. there's, right. There's, because of COVID, it was one thing. But I mean, I we've been teaching long enough that we've known this has been happening for no. um, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, no, Decades. yes, of, yeah. course, of course, right? Of course. I mean, lack of yeah. accountability. And and don't get me wrong. I mean, my regular students here, the, the regular what you might stereotypically call normal college students, which mm -hmm. we're not normal college. It's a community college. Right. We have all ranges. Mm -hmm. But my normal students who are coming in right out of high school their writing is no better and their yeah. their their ability to respond to prompts and things is sometimes no better than what you're seeing you know at your level as well and it's not your fault it's it's a systemic kind of thing right. let's blame this let's blame the system that's a yeah, fault that's right right let's that's just blame right. the system, <laughs> blame the system on that one. you guys are awesome is there anything that that you need from me and is there anything that you need from us i'm continuing to learn so at some point or another i'm going to be reaching out i know at least to the people that I've been assigned to now, mm -hmm. um, I'll be asking them throughout the course of the year, not right now, no need to panic guys who aren't here, but mm -hmm. um, at some point next year, you know, send me an example of one of your assessments, Okay. right? Like what is your, what what have you done? What, what uh, have you done in sculpting? What have you done in uh, your drawing class? What have you done in a music class that demonstrates that some of these uh, requirements have been fulfilled. You don't have to fulfill every requirement in one assignment, but just show me something, show me an assessment, and then tell me this really worked, or man, this did not go the way that I wanted it to. I'm never doing this again. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. And, okay. and we, I will build up a portfolio over time, and hopefully after a little while at this, we can start to see some some of these changes being implemented, or at least some of these positive suggestions being implemented. Yeah. Yeah. One last thing I want to ask for is this university wide. Um, I don't know if they if they I, they had to breach this question. Um, AI, mm -hmm. let us know what their stance is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very it's a very broad question, very broad in terms um, of assistance for students. Yeah. So yeah. If, as soon as the, the the college comes up with something. Yeah. Like make sure that that is shared with all of us because there's a lot of variation on what administrators are thinking, saying, and, and doing. doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we've historically been a little bit behind the curve. I mean, when the, the whole pandemic thing was in full force, I had to create my own code of conduct for Zoom because I had courses where, I, and I, I will never forget this, I, I asked, please, that your cameras remain on and that your face is in view mm -hmm. during the class. Mm -hmm. And so I'll never forget this, a, a young lady, I could see a hand hit the, hit the, the keyboard and she was in bed. The hand came out <laughs> of the cupboard and hit the keyboard to, to shut the camera off. <laughs> she was there. Yeah, she she counted in the right. log. She was there, right. but she was out cold. Sound was off, camera was off. I had to come up with yeah. a policy that I make my students sign off on, and I count their signature yeah. as a grade mm -hmm. that they have actually read and acknowledged. That when we have a Zoom presentation, you're going to be coherent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be looking up your nose, or I'm not going to see what kind of job the plasterer did right. on your ceiling. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm certainly not going to be viewing you rolling over in bed. You know, I used to have a kid who would position his camera so that it, you'd see his TV in like inappropriate movies and things. Mm -hmm. uh, of course. And I, and I thought being in the reptile room was it, bad. I had, a, I had a kid that he, he was in a room that was just surrounded by like lizards oh, and snakes. Yeah, nice. And 
Yeah, and I, I had so one, it, it, yeah, it, it, that was just a whole. An I, I I've had you yeah, know similar right experiences. I think we've all had those similar experiences. So we long answer to a short mm -hmm. question. We have been historically bad out of the gate. We're not the quickest out the gate when it comes to these questions. So sometimes there's a college policy. Sometimes it's up to the instructor. In your case, it would be much, much more beneficial to have a, an expectation, a policy in place mm -hmm. for peace of mind for you guys. And, and if we want to wrestle with it a different way on our level, then that's up to us. But that's definitely a very valid suggestion. Uh, no, I'm just saying whenever, no, they, whenever the campus it. comes up with... Whatever their policy is, just please let us know. Please yeah. let us know. Great. Whatever they decide. Yeah. No, that's good. I, I will take all of this to heart. Um, we good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Productive? Not helpful. productive? Oh no, it was very productive. I, I hope so. Um, yeah. You helped me. I mean, did I pass? Absolutely. Blind colors. Okay. Yeah. Blind. <laughs> just trying to get trying to get uh, used to these shoes that I was thrown into. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Well, I look forward to seeing you guys again. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Good. I look forward to it too. Yeah, if you're able to, yeah. if you're able to stop in, if you're yeah. over to observe or whatever. Well, Richland would be awesome. I mean, I, yeah. it's right here. I live, I live over the mountain, right in Allen Bank. Oh, okay. And so I'm right past Winburg, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, really? Richland would be great. Okay. Yeah. So you're actually over my way. Yes. I live in Claysburg. Oh, you live in Claysburg. Or below okay. Claysburg. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I am there. Of course. Sure. Yeah. 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 We live up on. Uh, on the side of the mountain. You know where the hairpin turn is? Yeah. yeah. First right hand turn off of the hairpin, right down there, shortcut oh, road, wow. right on the side of the mountain. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Changing dynamic. We've got, uh, we, we lived in a primarily rural wooded area. And then in the last four years, just houses started springing wow. up because people want to get away. Right. Sure. Yeah. And we've got acreage down there. So people want to get out and mm -hmm. not be bothered. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Neat. So stop in any time. I'm, I'm around. And it's just. Now are you buffered enough that you still maintain your privacy? I got five acres. There you go. I got five acres and an apple orchard. Okay. My wife is driving me crazy because she wants to add chickens. So we'll see. Yeah, let her do chickens. Let her do chickens. Let her do chickens. Yeah, it's well, just the bright side is they might maintain the road a little bit better if there are more people. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I, that's I am just I have tech space, you know. I'm just <laughs> praying for better internet access at oh, this yeah. point. That's what I'm praying. Good for. luck that's, with that. Yeah, no, Bed Bedford County, our, our corner of Bedford County is not yeah, that area is a dead zone for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not good, not good. Yeah. So T-Mobile yeah. is supposed to provide excellent coverage. It's just that they haven't expanded service to that area yet. 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 Yeah. So I'm told yeah. within the next six months, it should be coming. Wow. Six more months. It's only been 17 years. So yeah. let's wait for six so months. Do you get any service at all? Or do you have, is it like at and Okay. at and All right. Yeah. It's, it's moderate at best. Mm. So. Out in the orchard. Yeah, right. five trees up, I'm, twenty trees up. I'm right hanging. There. That's the sweet spot. I'm hanging from an apple yeah. tree while I'm trying to converse. You know, it's a bugger it. in winter. You know, but I, yeah. yeah. Hysterical. Well, I am going to. I'm going to spare my online people who are going to watch this later from any more discussion. I'm going to, to close this. Oh, up. you can edit yeah. it. <laughs> you can yeah. go back and edit all this out. <laughs> we can get rid of all of that. All right. Well, um, God keep you, and I hope we see each other again really soon. I'm going to sign off on this. Goodbye, internet type people. Um, and I will see you when I see you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right.